the older a man gets, the higher the chances of an enlarged prostate. Eight out of every ten men eventually develop an enlarged prostate. But this does not necessarily mean that one will develop prostate cancer, which is the commonest cancer in men. I speak to Dr. Patrick Mbothia at Jamie Hospital in Karatina as he does a prostate resection surgery using endoscopy, a minimally invasive surgery on Justus Kihara, who is 74 years. Shinda yangu ni kwa kisawiri sijui na ituaji, lakini kwa kisungu na sikia jina itua prostate enlargement. One of the issues that they get is uh, what we call lower urinary tract uh, symptoms. And uh, lower urinary tract symptoms basically means that the urination begins to have issues. Symptoms hile inanisumbua mpaka wa sahi ni kuenda haja mara mingi. Kwanza ni kikunywa kama ni chai, ujia, ujitu ingine. Kama ni jioni hata na ezaenda usiku moja mara kumi. Ukifika kwa shoo, haikuishi. Unarudi ukifika kwa nyumba, unasikia unataka kurudi tena kuenda haja. So this here is the urinary bladder and uh, this is the prostate gland and uh, so urine comes from the bladder of course after coming from the kidneys and once it's here it has to pass through the prostate literally part of the, the urethra is in the prostate and then it will you know track out all the way outside so when this enlarges you know, it starts causing blockage uh, to the urine. That is how the lower urinary tract symptoms come. Uh, some of which may be uh, frequency, that is just urinating many times, especially at night. So they hardly can get good sleep. Because every one, two, three hours, they are always out. Uh, sometimes the urine starts uh, hesitating. So they go to say, uh, to pass urine, and uh, they have to wait a few seconds before they start and then the flow is slow uh, so that uh, they say that people can actually find you uh, and then leave you you know still going on um, and then sometimes they get uh, at the worst case scenario complete uh, blockage what we call acute uh, urinary retention uh, and of course some get uh, a lot of uh, urine left in the bladder after passing urine and they get what we call chronic retention so that after some time if, if you for example do an ultrasound uh, of the bladder you actually find that they have sometimes even up to half a liter of uh, urine left in the bladder so they are unable to finish uh, uh, urinating sikujua ni nini labda nilisema labda ni umri imepita sijui lakini wakati nimeenda kuna daktari na nikapigwa mapicha kadhaa Dio wakasema, prostate ni yangu ni enina iko kubo. The reasons are not very well known, uh, but of course some of the theories uh, postulated include the fact that uh, the balance of hormones as a man grows older uh, is a bit changed. And also because the prostate gland is uh, an organ under uh, hormonal control, just like the breasts in women, the ovaries, the same way you get, you know, uh, ovarian growth is sort of the same scenario with the prostate. But certainly age is perhaps the biggest risk factor. So as you grow older, you expect the prostate to enlarge as you age. Our total nimewareza baada ya kuwa diagonized. Hapo mbeleni sikuwa na wambia bibi tudi ya lijua yyo shida yangu ya kuenda cho mara mingi mara mingi. Hei haja kidogo. Alikuwa saa yote niliambia wewe enda hospitali wewe enda hospitali lakini mimi nilikuwa nafikiria pengine hii itaisha lakini ikasidi sasa ni ngumu sana kuambia watoto watoto mnajua watoto yangu sasa baba yangu anaenda choo mara mingi mingi so nikaona vizuri nione daktari daktari ndiye atanipatia ushauri cancer of the prostate vis-a-vis -vis benign uh, prostate enlargement um, of course at early stage, you may not be able to tell the difference completely because the man may just present uh, to you uh, with ur lower urinary tract uh, symptoms. So it's upon investigations that you begin to try and delineate between you know, uh, benign enlargement and uh, if you have cancer 
in the prostate. And sometimes they actually occur together. Wamefanya makojo wakapeleka laboratory kuna testi ingine wanasema ultrasound wakapiga picha kuna ingine nisikia inaitwa sijiku so hii inaitwa inaitwa PSA hiyo ya ultrasound walisema wanataka kuona eh, extent ya hiyo eh, prostate imenaji kiasi gani alafu hiyo PSA daktari aniambia wanataka kuona kama kuna any sign ya cancer there is no one test that will differentiate it's usually uh, you know a battery of uh, investigations of course many people have heard about uh, PSA uh, the blood test that you know people go for and sometimes people have been told that you can differentiate between benign condition of the prostate and uh, cancer of the prostate that is not entirely true uh, but of course the higher the uh, PSA which means prostate specific antigen the higher it is the higher the chances there are certain you know like cut off values that are dependent on age that you can use to start you know uh, seeing uh, whether it's cancer or, or benign uh, enlargement and of course you have to examine the patient you examine the prostate uh, you feel for example if it's just enlarged and doesn't have you know like nodular areas when you're examining then the more likely chance that it is a benign condition now uh, after that you go in for some imaging tests um, at the basic level you can do an ultrasound uh, kidney, ureter, bladder, prostate, ultrasound, um, and that can help you to see better uh, what the prostate looks like. If you're a bit convinced that uh, you might be dealing with cancer, for example, you will need to do a biopsy. But these days we prefer to do a MRI first, a magnetic resonance imaging first, so that, for example, if the cancer in the prostate is in a place that is, uh, you know, hidden within the prostate, you can actually tell where exactly it is, and then you go in to do a needle biopsy, you'll be able to take exactly the place that you, that was looking suspicious on MRI. If someone comes a bit late with cancer of the prostate and it is advanced, uh, then you are looking at someone perhaps who has bone uh, metastasis, they may come just with bone pain, for example, uh, and then there are many other tests you'd have to do. Hello, Yangu, it is two cousins, Wakati, I remember here, Wakati, you mentioned Gina cancer, it is two cousins. We say, like many other conditions, and especially for men, we always say, uh, by the time you're hitting, uh, you know, 40, at the very least, you know, start getting medical checkup. Uh, and not just for the prostate, for many other things, including uh, hypertension, diabetes, and so on. Uh, for men specifically, then you would go ahead and just check a bit of the prostate. Uh, the recommendations about, for example, taking PSAs are a bit controversial. Uh, but of course, you might want to go there if, for example, someone has a very strong family history of cancer of the prostate, for example. Certainly, if you start experiencing problems with urination, it is important to have the prostate checked. However, it's important to note that not only the prostate it can give you uh, urination issues. Eh? You can have uh, narrowing of, of the uh, urine passage, the urethra, you can have strictures. Sometimes you can have stones within the urinary system. Uh, sometimes you can have uh, infection, like infection in the bladder may give you symptoms that are almost like, you know, prostatic uh, issues. And so uh, certainly at the age of 40, uh, you want to start uh, having medical checkup. And if you have a very strong family history, perhaps even earlier. There is something called the International Prostate Symptom Score that gives you like a range of uh, you know, mild symptoms, uh, moderate to severe, uh, and also issues of quality of life. So if a patient comes and uh, you have done the prostatic uh, evaluation and uh, they're having urination uh, issues, uh, you may start with um, uh, medical treatment. By medical treatment, there are some uh, medi medicines that try to shrink the prostate, you know, relax the smooth muscle in the prostate um, so that it releases um, uh, the urine a little better. And then you can try that over six months to a year, and then you keep evaluating. And then before you opt for 
uh, surgical uh, options. Walisema ile option ni iko sasa sababu amelisha nipatia dawa nikakunywa nikakataa ku, kupungua. Akasema ile sasa imebaki ni kufanya operation. If you're going to do an open prostatectomy, you'd come at the lower side of the belly of the patient and you know open an incision there and go in. In uh, transurethral resection of the prostate, TRP, you'll pass the instrument through this area that has got a light, has got an electric knife, uh, you know, uh, a telescope to be able to see, and come all the way up to the bladder. And then you will literally uh, cut the prostate in little bits, little bits, uh, until you have a good channel where urine can now pass without um, uh, having any hindrance. So this is the tower. It basically has a camera system, uh, a screen system, because as we said, we are not going to cut the patient. We will be looking from inside. There are patients who will come and you might go for surgery, you know, straight. For example, some people come with such chronic retention that their kidneys are at risk because urine has started backing up uh, towards the kidneys and they are almost going into renal failure. Or they have had uh, both one or two episodes of um, acute urinary retention. So uh, those are some of the issues that might uh, push you more towards uh, surgery. Yeah. And of course, the patient's uh, preference. Uh, there are patients who say, you know, I'm not ready for surgery. Can we try medication first? And, and you go for it and, and, and see. Some people feel like they might go and, you know, things really get destroyed. But uh, one of the things that I found is very important is peer, you know, uh, peer discussions between, for example, the old men who have gone through this. So in the uh, shopping centers and in the churches and so on, as they discuss, and you know, someone sees a friend of his went through this and they are okay, that sort of encourages uh, the men. And you know, men uh, fear hospitals. So they need to see a, a neighbor who went through this and is being able to look after his cows and his children and so on. So it's more of an information issue. It's more of a seeing someone else has gone through it and they have been able to, uh, to go and come back home. Wengine nimesikia wakisema wamekuwa na hizo shinda na wameenda wakafanyiwa hiyo operation na hiyo shida ikaisha. Sasa diyo hata mimi nikawa na hiyo college. Wanza ni kuwa na ugopa kabisa. Tena nikuwa nafikiria hizo mandawa nilikuwa napewa itafanya hiyo, hiyo kufura yende shini. Lakini sasa ikakuwa hakuna option, sasa ikasema basi vile madaktari wana hiyo uwezo ni, ni, ni taifa hiyo. The choice of uh, to do TRP or open is not just uh, a straightforward choice. Because one, it depends on the status of the patient and also the size of the prostate. So a small prostate is easier done, you know, by uh, TRP, uh, especially using uh, older methods of TRP. Because some of the fluid that you use to irrigate the area as you cut, some of it gets absorbed in, in the patient. And if you're there for too long, then you start having other side effects. These days, like uh, what you are going to use today, called a bipolar TRP, means you're going to use uh, salt water saline to do the cut. Eh? So this can help, you know, you can be there for an hour, two hours, so you can go for a much larger, much larger prostate. So prostates can range anything from 30 grams to even 150. So the bigger the prostate, the more the chances that you might opt for an open procedure, especially if the patient has, you know, other issues like diabetes, hypertension, and you don't want to be in surgery for so long. But as I said, with the use of the bipolar instruments and the, the, the salt water, we are now able to do much bigger, bigger prostates. But it's important to say that the outcomes are essentially the same if they are done, you know, in expert hands, yes. The whole of this is the prostate, you see? A bit magnified, but um, hopefully it can clear up a bit. So what happened is you can see, because of uh, pushing urine a bit, uh, he started getting, uh, you see these strands, eh? 
it means that the, the bladder has been struggling, so we call that uh, trabeculations. Okay, and then we pull out a bit. So this is the prostate that we are going to cut. The cancer treatment uh, of the prostate is really dependent on stage, on the grade, and uh, on the age of the patient. There is the issue of cancer in the prostate. There is also the issue of whether it is causing urinary uh, blockage. So if there is uh, urinary blockage happening, then you have to go and uh, you have to go on and treat the urinary problem. Now the cancer, the treatment really depends on the stage at which you catch it. So sometimes you just have a small uh, foci within the prostate, uh, and the patient may go for options, for example, like radiotherapy. There are patients who opt for um, what you call a radical prostatectomy, where you literally remove the whole of the prostate. But it is important to note that. Uh, Prostate cancer has several grades of soy aggressiveness, and uh, age is also an issue. So if you catch someone, say, with early uh, cancer of the prostate, it is a uh, low grade uh, on, uh, on, uh, when the pathologist you know, looks at the biopsy samples, and the patient is, not, you know, is quite advanced in years, say 70, 75. There is also the role for watchful waiting, and, and because it is said to grow you know, slowly. But if it is the aggressive type, then you have other things you need to do. So the uh, strategies for managing uh, uh, cancer of the prostate include the fact that cancer of the prostate is really dependent on the male hormone called testosterone. And so you have strategies to try and lower uh, testosterone levels. And that way, you uh, reduce the rate of growth of, um, yeah. of cancer of the prostate. Testosterone, as the name suggests, is made in the testes. Okay, and so uh, some of the surgical approach would be to actually go ahead and uh, remove the testes. Many men, you know, find that a little difficult, but with counselling, some accept because the strategies for reducing testosterone levels now on medication uh, are not exactly cheap. So we have uh, tablets that you swallow to try and block the hormone from reaching the cells. And there are strategies to lower it by counteracting it with a, you know, a medication that you inject. So uh, those medications are given as what you call depot injections. That means you get either once a month or once every three months. And you know, their costs could range anything from 10,000 to 25,000. So it really depends also on the socioeconomic status of the, process, of the patient. You, you, you get quite a bit of improvement. For example, a patient may have come with very severe back pain because of metastatic spread to the bones. So when you lower the testosterone levels and use other combinations, some of that pain you know will go. It's not the kind of pain that sometimes just goes with your normal analgesics, your normal painkillers, because really it's a metastatic uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, and sometimes even the urination uh, also improves. For some patients who've got both cancer of the prostate and blockage of the urine, we can also do uh, something called a channel transurethral resection of the prostate so that you create a channel within the prostate to relieve the urine. You see the way that knife is glowing. It's cutting. Yeah? Then you can stop the vessels. If you want to do, remove the prostate for prostate cancer, there are two things. Either you're going for cure in which case you want to remove the whole prostate. That way you go for a radical prostatectomy. So literally, you know, when you do any other prostatectomy for benign disease, you'll open the channel and largely leave the prostate, you know, coverings within the patient. But if you do a radical, you'll have to remove the whole prostate and literally bring the bladder to where the urethra is. The only time you'll do a TURP for cancer is not to cure but as a palliative procedure to open the channel so the patient can pass urine better even as you go, to do, uh, you go on to do the other you know, strategies for management of the cancer of the prostate itself. So in that case, we call it a channel, TURP. It's called an elic evacuator. So you use to like vacuum the bladder so the chips can fall into this uh, bottle.
uh, first of all, expectations are very important. So uh, what we say as, as doctors is that any patient who comes and is going to go through any prostate or reproductive you know, system, uh, surgery or medication, they need to have the expectations right. Because sometimes people come already with their function down and they expect that after surgery these things are going to uh, you know, miraculously improve. But if we set a good uh, expectation you know, level and you tell them, uh, for example, that if you go for radical prostatectomy, for example, for cancer of the prostate, mm -hmm. there are chances are that if you're going to get the whole tumor out uh, and it has affected one of the nerves, they may be, they may be uh, you know, uh, severed along when you're doing the surgery. However, we try and do what is called nerve sparing uh, prostatectomy so that we try and preserve as much as possible after the surgery. But uh, after patients, for example, who have benign prostate uh, enlargement, once their urination improves, some of them actually find that their function actually also improves. Yeah. So it is not a, a yes, no, uh, and or. It is really patient dependent, but it, you have to really discuss this in, in depth. If uh, it's about uh, using, uh, you know, a minimal invasive surgery to remove the prostate, for example, that's available here. If you're going for radical prostatectomy, which is different from doing a prostatectomy for just normal, you know, urine blockage, you're going for cancer treatment. Um, we have obviously things like robotic uh, prostatectomy, where they use a robot to access the pelvis and, and get the prostate out. Uh, in good hands, it may compare, you know, the same with uh, just open uh, prostatectomy. Other issues, of course, would be radiotherapy. Fortunately, now in the country, I think we have uh, uh, several centers that have fairly good uh, radiotherapy machines that are able to aim exactly where you want this done. Uh, so there is really good choice for patients in this country. However, uh, a patient must always be given the option uh, to go all of, anywhere in the world to get whatever it is they feel is good for them. It is important for patients to just you know, consult with their doctors and discuss. Even if you want to go out of the country, you don't have to hide your condition. Uh, the doctors here will be able to tell you, you know, we are able to do this here, but for this option, uh, please go somewhere. And sometimes they may even give you a better referral than you trying to look for a place by yourself. A button electrode, it vaporizes. Whatever it touches turns into vapor. You see? You don't even, it doesn't even give you any chips. It just vaporizes everything. To be honest, I think uh, you get good results both outside the country and here. The issue about results, I think, is more about at what stage the patient, you know, sought help. So there's a certain stage at which, you know, you'd seek help for prostate cancer, for example, or any other cancer. And no matter really where you go, the truth is the outcomes are guarded. And so maybe what patients need to understand is that, you know, medicine is largely the same all over the world. The tools and the equipment may be different, but in terms of being told honestly where you are, your prognosis, I think it's important for someone to just understand that so they don't go with you know, false hopes, uh, use quite a bit of resources. I think this discussion is really multifaceted because we are talking about human lives and their you know, social circles. So it's really upon uh, the family, upon the carers, upon the doctors, upon even the religious um, you know, uh, people to just discuss this issue so that you know, people get prepared. For example, when something is caught a bit late, they get prepared for the journey. Even when cancer is on the way to cure, there is also a journey. And that in itself has, is, has you know, quite a bit of psychological and psychosocial impact. So patients need to discuss that. And perhaps the thing to say is um, people need also to not fear death, to be in a, in a sense uh, ready for eventualities because it happens to everybody. And also to be able to put you know, their houses in order and so on, so that we, we don't get into so many problems. Yeah. Panoramic view of the urethra. Now, well open, after we have opened the prostate, 
hiyo hiyo grade au hiyo prostate hiyo mahali imefura wa kikata e, itafungua hiyo mahali imefunga alafu mkojo itarudi kawaida itakuwa sasa ngumu nitakuwa sasa sina hiyo shida hiyo ya kwenda haja mara mingi unajua wakati mwingine nina avoid kwanza kukunywa kitu kama na trouble siku si na kunywa saa nyingine inaweza toka yenyewe ikiwa naenda kwa, kwa barabara kama nimeenda kwa matatu au kwa bus kama nimekunywa kitu lakini kama sija kunywa sasa inatoka kidogo sasa nafikiria hiyo operation ikimalizika hiyo shida itakwisha just urging men to keep checking on their health yeah um, it's important they fear but uh, they must not fear because they 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 need it if you cut something early it means less likely to have occupied uh, a large area it's less likely to have uh, spread to other places and so you'll be doing more of a local treatment which has obviously better outcomes than uh, something that has already spread men from the age of 40 should get their health checked not just their prostate dr masikorir for health digest KT News.